this time we will start uh, analysis of highway capacity it is chapter 9 of your book so what i did here i summarized the entire chapter in a very small document so let us start uh, what is this chapter this chapter is all about determining the level of service level of service or los loss so in this chapter we will determine the level of service in our road if our level of service is good then our design is good if our level of service is not good is not adequate we will increase our lane or other condition to have the desired um, level of service so now what is level of service uh, this figure will tell you clearly level of service means like not so many traffic in our road we can drive as we want not so much disturbing from others so that is the best quality service possible then if my number of traffic increases even increases here increases here the worst case is now uh, lof uh, loss f so a to f a is the best one f is the worst possible so in numerically uh, if i see this table this will tell you the uh, numerical value say um, density passenger car per mile per lane pc oblique mi oblique ln it means passenger car per mile per lane so if passenger car per mile per lane is 11 or less it is a level of service a from 11 to 18 b 18 to 26 c 26 to 35 d this way we classify different level of services okay now how to find the level of service so it's very clear that we will have to find density first if i find the density i can find my level of service if it is good then good if it is not good then we have to revise our design increase number of lane or lane width whatever we will see one by one so our target is to find density d <clears throat> so if we know the density d we can find our level of service so d is vp by s what is vp vp is demand flow rate under base condition so it has two parameter demand flow rate that means whatever our demand in our road and under base condition base condition means i will say ideal condition uh, what is that i am going there uh, b before that okay then what is s s is mean speed of traffic mean speed that means whatever the average speed of our traffic under base condition so again we need base condition what is base condition i will go there so make sure that you understood vp and s vp is, is simply our demand under base condition is not our current condition under a theoretical condition uh, similarly is the average speed possible in our highway under base condition what is base condition i listed at the beginning uh, let me go now uh, go there so yes base condition i wrote somewhere here base condition means good visibility and good visibility no heavy vehicles at least 20 feet lanes drivers are regular all kinds of ideal condition is called base condition not our current so our target is to find density to find density we need demand under base condition and our uh, mean free speed under base condition so to find density we have to find this first let us go step by step so our step number one is to find uh, we will do uh, s now what is s s we also call ffs same thing uh, s is short form ffs is full full form what is ffs ffs is free flow speed free flow speed you uh, hopefully you heard about this before coming to this point free flow speed means that in a, in, in a road there is nobody else only you everything is ideal and what is the maximum speed you can drive that is called free flow speed how to find free flow speed free flow speed we can find using this equation now what is this uh, f lw 
adjustment for lean width l w this means lean width f means factor simply factor for lean width if my lane width is 12 is good that means it is 1 if my lane width is less th that means you will have disturbance you will have difficulty to drive so in that case there will be a factor uh, so oh sorry no. when l is 12 it is not 1 it is 0 that means it will not disturb my peripheral speed so when lane width is 12 or more it is 0 if my lane width decreases i should uh, deduct some value from my ideal or from my maximum free flow speed so depending on lane width i can find my factor i can insert it here next is lc lateral clearance so f adjustment for right side lateral clearance how to find it table theory that means when you are driving in the right side of your road if there are so many say trees or house or even uh, some dist, uh, uh, dis, uh, some some obstacle then it, it will be it will be very difficult for you to drive so this factor uh, accounts this so say if you have a, a six feet of right side lateral clearance that means after the lane uh, lane finishes um, you have six feet there is nothing else in that case if your number of lane is two then your factor is zero so everything is zero now if you have less than six feet say you have only three feet lateral clearance and if your number of lane is two then your factor is 1.8 if your number of lane is three factor 1.2 if your number of lane is four factor is 0 0.06 that means as my clearance decreases uh, you face difficulty to drive so you need to decrease your speed by this factor so if I go back to my equation, this equation, so now you know how to find later a lane width factor, lateral clearance factor, then something else, TRD, total ramp density. What does it mean? It means the exit or entry of, of your road. If there is an exit when another car enters into the highway, you feel disturbed. So, or also when a vehicle takes exit, it decreases the speed you feel disturbed so th this is the, so this factor will take care of this disturbance so it is trd total ram density say in a mile you have one exit one entry that means actually two two per mile if both exit and entry uh, at the same point which is uh, like not possible uh, tip, uh, um, or other case in 10 mile there are two exits one entry that means three divided by ten so that is the total ram density so once you find this ram density lateral clearance lane width you can find the free flow speed okay so free flow speed is done now free flow speed if i go back free flow speed is s but there is a correction we will see and before that let us see what is vp demand under base condition so vp is we use this equation to find our vp what is this v this v is our current demand under uh, prevailing condition what is prevailing condition that means what is our current condition um, uh, and base condition is ideal in real life I maintaining ideal condition is not always possible so V is our uh, demand under current condition. Then we'll divide by some factor. What is PSF? You know that. Peak hour factor. What is peak hour factor? You saw it earlier. That means in the peak hour of traffic, uh, the total hourly volume divided by um, top 15 minutes. But, uh, times 4. Times 4 means in the denominator, uh, times 4 of 15 minutes. That is the peak hour factor. Okay, if you again what is peak, peak hour factor the peak traffic in an hour say 1000 divided by in that hour what is the maximum value in a 15 minute segment say in a 15 minute segment is uh, say 200 then 200 times 4 for uh, 
that equivalent to an uh, one hour considering only 15 minutes so we'll divide that uh, four times uh, 200 that means 800 uh, so a thousand by uh, 800 but it is not pro this is not uh, actually a good number let me give you another example say the peak uh, peak traffic in our say during lunch period is 1000 and if I consider 15 minutes on that uh, lunch period say it is 300 that reason if I multiply that 15 minutes time it becomes 1200 then 1000 by 12, 12, uh, 1200 is our peak hour factor so hopefully you saw it earlier what is n number of lane in one direction f is b is heavy vehicle factor heavy vehicle factor now what is this so in ideal condition we consider everything is passenger car but if there is heavy vehicle they go slow so it, it disturbs other so we have to find a factor how to find it i'm going there before that what is fp fp is a familiarity factor that means if the regular uh, user are regular that means the drivers who use this road they use it every day was uh, regularly so they know the road in that case we use one so yeah that means if you know the road and uh, you can drive more comfortably compared to if you do not know, know the road your first time in this road that is difficult now so for regular cases we use one for irregular or um, new driver the factor is in in the book okay heavy vehicle factor how to find it this is the equation what is pt pt is percentage of track it is equivalency for track okay if i go down or passenger car equivalent of track that means one track is equivalent to how many car two three five similarly similarly here pr means uh, persons or proportion of uh, uh, of a resident uh, so not recreational vehicle uh, pr proportional rv we call it rv recreational vehicle now this value should be in uh, fraction because i use one here if I use 100 here, you could take at percent value, this fraction. Then what is year? It is a uh, passenger car equivalent of one RV. Uh, okay, how to find it? There is a table here. Say in level rolling mountainous, what does it mean? Level means the grade of the road is uh, less than 2%. Rolling means 2 to 10% slope. And mountainous means the road has more than 10% slope or grade now for this condition uh, track or buses so one track or our bus equivalent to 1.5 car same thing for rv say my road is rolling rolling means uh, grade or slope is 2 to 10 percent say one rv is equivalent to two r two so one rv equals to two passenger car this way we can find this factor insert it here again pt is in fraction fraction this number is coming from here then you will find the heavy vehicle factor so once you insert uh, familiarity factor heavy vehicle factor number of plane p p a s p a p cover factor you will get the demand under base condition so again uh, if i go back uh, in this equation bp is done s is done from here fps but still there is some story here what is that story the story i am discussing in uh, step number three what is that so for every road if the pre sorry if, for if the if the um, flow rate increases my free flow speed decreases we, we know that say for example at 70 mile <coughs> mile per hour uh, there is a break point flow rate what is that it means this 70 mile per hour is good up to this amount of traffic if my traffic becomes more my this speed this free flow speed decreases that is called uh, reduced speed beyond break point flow that means this free flow speed is valid until my break point that means okay so whatever your vp you, you find you, you found whatever vp you found from here if 
that value and say in here FFS say FFS you got 70 okay assume this is 70 and this is say 1200 then you have to revise that 70 so 70 breakpoint event is 1200 your VP is 1200 that means exactly at the border that means your speed is valid it's okay so whatever FFS you got uh, 70 is good but if you get your VP more than this that means your 70 will decrease you have to use this equation to get the reduced speed that is the story about um, FFS FFS means if I go back this is story once you find it from this equation then you found your VP then you may need to revise your FFS using this table so again how to use this whatever speed you got say you got 68 68 means 65 70 68 is in between these two so you can interpolate that means your break even point may be um, 1270 80 something you have to interpolate then uh, if your VP is less than this good your FFP is good if it is more than this you have to reduce it using this equation using this equation so that is something uh, something and another thing there's another column here what does it mean it means maximum flow rate whatever VP you got it cannot exceed this column say your FFS is 70 70 your VP is 2500 but maximum possible is 2400 that means your road is not good you need to increase the capacity uh, increase the lane so that is uh, the uses of this table it it does two things one one is no, not two things three things one is check the maximum capacity number two check the break point if it is less than this this is speed is good if it is more than this you have to decrease your speed okay then once you get it yes i try to say that here so once you get your bp once you get your revised ffs or simply yes you can find your density once you know your density done you'll go to table number one table number one and find your level of service if your level of service is good then your design is done otherwise you have to go back and change the parameter what parameter you can change you cannot uh, you can increase your lane width but that will change something you can change your lateral clearance that will also help you but these two parameters doesn't help so much best way to revise is number of lane if you in if you divide say in the current number of lane is two if you make it three this will reduce a lot so increasing the number of lane will help you to obtain the desired level of service okay so now practice some uh, small small example for a, a for ap exam mm, I, I i presented some small small problem here uh, two three mm, four so some small problems here and in your handout or powerpoint slide you, or in your textbook you will see more examples so practice those uh, I will wrap up here. Mm, thank you.